This is a slogan. We really want to be the university. What does it mean? It's a little bit different for everybody, but everybody has the idea that university gives something. And we believe that if you think so, then you are in the right place. Next one, please. So this was a topic what I had to, or it was my must to talk about. Next, please. I am coming from the department which has a name Thomas Johann Sebeck. And he is the, probably the most well-known Estonian engineering scientist, scientist who was born here and he discovered the thermoelectric effect. Of course, he made it in Germany. That time Estonia was not a little at all technology-oriented country. But we are very proud of him and the topic of the research done in my department partly also is connected to his activities. And if you will walk in the old city, then you will see that on the wall of her born house, you see the Plagu, and this is done by us from our university. And also we have the statue here uh, in the university campus. The next one, please. This is about me. You, so you see there are two Thomas. Yes. Thomas Johann Sebeck is my schoolmate. Only 200 years are different between us. But this is the school where we both visited. I made my PhD in Hungary. It's already 30 years ago. And as you see, I am guiding the department. Additionally, maybe this was the reason why they asked me to tell about the possible future. I am the member of the University Council and I am chairman of the Council Economic Working Group. So we look at the financial problems of the university and try to solve them in the better way. So I have some ideas and I know some problems as well. Okay, let's go to the picture. It's a little bit another look how our campus looks like. So we are here in this building and this is the university campus. And behind of this there are a technology park and somewhere behind the forest, I guess somewhere here, is a mectory house as well, which was already mentioned by my pre speakers. The next please. And once more, this is what we want. <laughs> that the both will stay alive. And you have the decision who are the students and who are the teaching staff. <laughs> Take as you wish. Next one, please. So, what are the problems? Uh, what must be solved? during the next years. First of all, university governance, research at the university improved or made, we have to make the, discuss, the decisions what, how to continue and of course from the point of view of students teaching training at the university. University governance, we are really in a unique situation in this year, because starting from the September the 1st, our university has its own law. So in Estonia there is a higher education law, University of Tartu, uh, law of University of Tartu, and now we have the law for the Tallinn University of Technology. And of course this law tells us a lot of things what were not defined earlier. It means that we have to change in connection with the law 
the governance structure, so how to rule the university. A lot of discussions are going on at the moment, and on, we have to fully apply our new law starting from 2016. Then uh, up to this time, we have to make all the major uh, changes in the ruling of the university, and also there will be some changes in the study order and in research as well. The most critical, probably, situation is how to handle the university landscape in this sense, colleges versus academy. Because it is already mentioned that we have in the university in the situation that we have four colleges which will not give the academic degree or partly will give the academic degree in the first level, especially when we're talking about the Tartu College. So they are, the colleges, they are so-called practical higher education oriented institutions. And taking into account the economic situation and the need of the industry, then the majority of engineers, and we are talking about, I, I am talking about the engineering sciences and engineering teaching and training. In an industry, majority of engineers are needed which are the organizers of the production, first level development of the products, and so on and so on. And a smaller part is really so-called academic the oriented engineers or maybe the people who will continue uh, as a PhD students later on. And at the moment, there are a lot of fields which are covered today by the colleges, but there are some colleges which are out of our university and sometimes it came to the conclusion that probably sometimes the quality of these colleges is not enough to fulfill the demands of the industry. And it's better to bring them under the umbrella of the university. Of course, the poor overtaken is not the re re realization of the idea, but to include also the academic stuff of the university in the teaching process in the colleges. This is the probably key uh, way how to improve uh, the quality of the colleges. And at the moment, for example, there are independent colleges which could, or in my opinion, which must include under the university umbrella, these are the IT college and the Tallinn Higher Education, whatever ever it calls, we call it Tuka Tuka in Estonia, <laughs> because it comes from the abbreviation of the name of the school. Uh, which is more oriented to civil engineering and uh, mechanical engineering. And you know that in a very many countries already, so-called uh, united universities will be coming into life to make optimized optimization of the uh, financial problems and to be more efficient in the teaching and training as well. In Denmark, for example, and also in Germany. Of course, German universities are not very well prepared to this uh, stage and so-called Gesamthochschule or Gesamtuniversität. Uh, some of them don't like it, but it looks like that the trend is still this especially when we are talking about small countries. And Denmark had made it already, and quite good success. So in my opinion, there will be some kind of additional uh, put together the forces also in Estonia, 
which means that probably in the future there will be possible to get international education also on the first industry-oriented level as well, and maybe then continue after some years working in the industry, because a bachelor at the moment, it's not finished higher education in my opinion. Sorry, this is a quite hard uh, declaration, but this is the situation. So this is a challenge what we have to solve during some next years, which is not probably your problem, but I was asked to, to tell what probably comes, and I selected some specific things. Research. We are talking about the science or research university. Yes, we are covering quite wide fields today. But we have, have to think that the money which is available for creating the core competence in the university, it's limited. We cannot cover the whole spectra of all directions to be involved in research and also educate, because the academy education, this is competence-based education. So if there is no research and development activities, then I don't believe that there will be high-quality teaching and training as well. So we have to make some decisions. What are the fields where we are successful? What we can define that these are where we are very good, excellent. We run here internationally recognized, highly recognized research, and we have the infrastructure. Because if we are talking about the research in the field of IT, then it's relatively easy. What do you need? Computer, paper, and your brains. Nothing else. And then every time, every kind of apps and whatever they call will, will come in. If we are looking a little bit more uh, experiment-oriented research, then it is extremely expensive. I can tell you that my department was quite successful in the improvement of the infrastructure of the research, which supports, of course, as teaching and training. And the Estonian government was quite clever in this sense because there was a special competition uh, made six years ago, the first round was, that the improvement of the infrastructure in the universities for research and development to upgrade the level uh, of the, and, and, and upgrade the quality. And of course, it was a competence-based uh, co um, uh, competence competition, and we were successful. And during the last six years, my department, thanks to this program, invested 8 million euro for the laboratory equipment. 8 million euro is a relatively large sum of the money. The result is that now we have very different uh, research, researchers from different countries. They are coming and they are looking, oh, here is better than at home. You have more modern equipment compared to this, what we have in our laboratories. And our task today is to keep this laboratory equipment level together with the research quality. On the, on, on, on the highest level, which is possible, taking into account our students, our PhD students and researchers. And of course, there is a problem, and this is a problem not only in Estonia, it's a problem in, 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 in Europe generally, that the domestic students, they want to go 
for work much earlier than the international. You already heard about it because they have a little bit more time to concentrate on the uh, studies. Probably they have, in the beginning, no girlfriend or no boyfriend, so there is more time for studies again. And they start to live in during the studies and then continue. And the applicants for the PhD studies are today already situations that there is a three to one, four to one, and the winners are the foreigners. It's quite interesting because different background, different culture people, and different knowledges are coming as well. And this is the really great problem, how to manage with the people who probably want to be here in Estonia for a longer time, how they can be consolidated in the society and find a place how to live here, especially when they are finishing the PhD studies. So this is quite important thing when we are talking about the research. And teaching and training, of course, what to teach, how to teach, and about the PhD studies as well. Uh, I have some crazy ideas about the studies as well, so let's jump once <coughs> forward. Ah, sorry. This is how the example of the financing is going on at the moment of the university, which will not very much change in the future. And this is basing on my department, but this is quite general model also for other departments or faculties who had the possibility to create the centers of excellence for the research, to be part in the program of the competence centers and making the doctoral schools. So all of these measures, what are here very concrete and, and are connected to the my department, they are also with, under other names valid for the other departments or faculties. These are additional financing tools for research and partly also for the training because the PhD students are directly involved in these activities <coughs> Master students could be. And this model is probably very uh, healthy and helps us really to be on the level what, where we want to be. Next, please. So here you see what we are doing and in our faculty. And we are representing, or I am representing this uh, study. And this was my idea to initiate this study plan or curricula some years ago. Now the younger people already are governing uh, and upgrading the programs and so on. Let's go forward. Uh, so it looks like let's go forward. So it's not so interesting probably for you. Let's go. Go. Next. Now the problem which is really quite interesting. How we evaluate or how we guarantee the quality of the, the te teaching and training. It's quite nice comparison what I, I, I came to this some years ago, especially when we were talking about the, the qualification of the engineers. Because you know that the qualification certificate will give on the base of the study results. Of course, there are some additional things, but majority is the study results. The study results from the curriculum are coming from the study results of the modules. And the study results of the modules are coming from the study results of the course. And if we have the five credit study course, then there are some list of the uh, knowledge is what the student has to know. 
which is quite similar for the bowl vault, if we are talking about five meters, for example. He has to make also something right. But the strange thing is that we evaluate in reality only this one, because this means that it is jumped over. All other things mean that failed. That is this situation. And how the employer who gets the diploma, where some marks are three, some marks are two, what does these students in reality know? What of these? In principle, the student has failed. This is a case. And this is a real problem because at the moment, in majority of the universities in the world are living with this system, and they said that there is no possibilities to change it. But now, if we look at this one, and there are in the world some attempts to apply so-called shifting credit point system. Tampere University has made some very successful results that if the mark is two, it means that two credits is given and the employer exactly knows or close to exactly that what this student probably knows. And he will get the master student that he has 90%, for example. This is my idea that probably we have to change our study system, something which is similar to this one, because it is much clearer for the, the industry people who are employing the people, who are taking over uh, our students, and so on. Of course, this is very difficult to apply in the very bureaucratic systems, but if we are talking about the competence-based education, then also the educated persons must be well and good, uh, uh, having a good competence. And probably this will be the most exciting task during the next 10 years to change our whole study systems. I have spoken on, on this topic already with our people. Of course, the first reaction was, oh, no, go away. What our information uh, working system uh, is, what it will do, it collapses. Nobody can know what, how many credits you will get. Very clear. If you get uh, two credits, then you have to pass 35 courses. And nobody tells you that you are a specialist. You are generalist. You know something about everything, but in reality you know nothing. Here is a specialist. So this is a talk what we have to have behind, uh, in, in front of us uh, in the near future. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's jump aboard. I have a question. Yeah. Do you know uh, any place else except Tampere University? Uh, I know that uh, also Stanford has made some attempts. I don't know the results. And uh, as far as I know, uh, in Sweden, there is uh, some university in the north. Ereburi or whatever. And Tromso in Norway also had made some attempts. Of course, it's not easy to apply. And it really needs very strong support from the side of the ICT. So it's not easy task. But from the point of view of the competence and the quality of the competence, I guess this is a major problem what we have to solve. Because we want to be the, on the edge level. And this is what really will differ us from the others, if we can reach this quality level. And everybody will know, oh, this is good place. We will do this. And then the master degree is a really specialist degree. Difficult to understand, difficult to apply, 
difficult to realize. But I personally think that it is one of the possibilities. Of course, we have also here some uh, attempts already made. Uh, we have one very uh, uh, so-called uh, active teaching person, Professor Velogook, who had applied this system, but he will be argued every, in, every, in, in the end of every school year that how you are doing this, what is not bureaucratically well organized. So this is a really, really hard task. But we can work on it, and who knows, maybe the next change of the higher education, which comes somehow from the new law as well, because the amount of money available for the teaching is not increasing in Estonia, and it will not increase also in other countries. So you have, we have to somehow optimize uh, the study process as well. And probably, again, probably this could be one way, of course, not for the bachelor. It is very well applicable for the master, which is a little bit smaller amount of students, and for the academy. Again, it's not so clearly, probably, applicable when we are talking about the college students. But who knows? There are a lot of clever people's, people as well in the university and colleges. Maybe somebody thinks a little bit better model also for them, which comes out from this, but then will be applied uh, in a concrete situation in the colleges. Okay, let's think or look what comes. Ah, this is a PhD studies. Let's go forward. Very important thing. Of course, it's again specific, our faculty, doctoral school, but almost all faculties have the doctoral schools, and this is very important that these schools will continue. It's really important from the point of view of the PhD students themselves, because it's an additional financing instrument for their participation in the conferences and to buy some additional smaller equipment even, and books, of course, as well. So really very important thing. Uh, for example, in very many countries, the doctoral schools have a very special status, and they are independent bodies or institutions. In our university, that's a virtual structure, which really supports uh, financially the PhD students. Next. This is what I already told you. Next. Uh, uh, what comes there? Next. Next. Ah. Okay, let's go forward. Let's go forward. One thing which is quite important when we are talking about the quality. Of course, again, it's an example of my department, but also other faculties and specializations are making so-called highly rec recognized international scientific conferences. They can't be in every scientific field, but uh, specific fields where the quality and the competence are available will be done. So we are running this conference already from the 1987, and the next will be the next month. And it's very important for the youngsters, for the PhD students, uh, the easiest and probably the cheapest way to get high-level publication. Of course, all the publications are evaluated in our conference, for example, International uh, Program Committee uh, evaluates all the papers, and all papers are evaluated by the three uh, different uh, scientists, so not everybody can participate, so the quality is guaranteed in any way, and all the papers will be available in the IEEE Explore uh, database, which is a recognized database for the scientists all over the world. Okay, the next one. Uh, next one, next one, next one. Oh, sorry, this must be. Now jump very, very quickly. This is not this, what I, uh, no, oh, 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 they are 
the results what we are doing, but it was not the task what I wanted to show to you. So jump, 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 jump. So you see different things what we are doing. Ah, I finished. Yeah, thank you.